again, esteemed officer, and welcome to crime. I already told you, it's just a storage room for employees. I don't understand why it's so important to you. Just let it go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be drawn to the books. Okay, fine. It's because this place is cursed. Just like Annette said, they don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you've ruined everything? The curse is so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease eating at the very foundation. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. Didn't, didn't that curtain just move? Everyone knows that all the previous companies in this building have sooner or later declared bankruptcy and their malicious spirits are still here, feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie lingering presence, as if I was unwanted here. Sounds familiar. Truly so? Perhaps the dark energies are leeching off you. You shouldn't stay in the store too long. It may be dangerous. It's not good to talk about the curse, not in detail. The negativism, it's dangerous. Talking about the void wraiths angers them. Wow, void wraiths. You have new words. Yes, I've contacted numerous parapsychologists and even a pair of Simonese mediators. They provided me with the wards. The wards help to keep the doom at bay and protect us against the darkness that lies further in the building. Even though now I fear, it's not enough. Oh, this. No, it's a special Hymian amulet blessed by desert pygmy shamans with a spell of compulsion it's to compel people to buy books. There are numerous spells cast throughout the store. I had the books anointed with a different inducement spell, for example. It's guaranteed to boost sales 15%. Desert pygmy shamans. That sounds like a rather questionable way to describe a group of people. Most certainly not. I don't want anyone who's not familiar with the psychic arts to get involved in this mess. Stay away. Leave the spirits be so they can return to their slumber. Psychic arts? Sounds right down our alley. Slither up to her, you silver-tongued fiend. Show her what world-class perfidy looks like. Are you sure? Don't think I haven't seen charlatans before. You're no paradetective. You look nothing like one. And you're clearly a drinker. Pardon me for being so blunt, but... You look like one. Hey now. Hey. 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 You need the booze to focus, all right? The lieutenant keeps his usual stony calm. He silently picks out his notebook. Go ahead then, rock her world, he thinks. I'll compose some notes. How do you know all this? Here we go. I 
I should have realised. A pattern lies within the fabric. The hand of fate guides us. Our meeting couldn't have been mere chance. Perhaps you truly are the one to deliver this woman from the doom. But I am not the only one at risk. I have to think of my daughter. You are certain you can help us? Keep us safe? I can't allow any collateral damage to hit us. If you promise, good officer, then you might be our last hope. Do you swear it? Thank you, sir. There's one more thing I haven't told you about yet. The entity. Do not act surprised. You know of these things, sire. Yes, a malignant entity that lives inside the chimney. It takes the form of a woman. A witch, most likely. She or it must be connected to the curse somehow. Yes, that chimney is part of the building's central furnace and it's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. Some unnatural magic, I assume. You should go find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. What is the source of this curse? Here's the key to the warded door behind the curtains. Take it. Oh, and please do return to me after you've looked round. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse. What you discover in there. Unbelievable darkness and ruin. These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen over and over. Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulinda, a map of Revachol, and a map of Martinez. This large map displays archipelagos. You see a constellation of small dots on the light blue emptiness of the Insulindic Ocean. The largest in the northeast is La Caillou. You are here. Another far away in the southwest, Seminese Islands, Ile de Fantom. Ozon, Laurentide, Fas Alamir, Archipelagos, North Arcade Islands. All just specks of dust on the vastness of the Insulindic. On the edges of the map, the color fades into a blur of dotted lines, black and white. In the northeast, a dust mite stands on the north coast of Caillou in a bookstore. It's you. You can, on Caillou, Revachon, a single black star, on Ozon, Fondelier, and Vimandu, on Archipelagos, Croyan Moran, Villiers, on Seminine, Oldivai, and on Laurentide, Deora of the Seven Seas. Lost little pearls of light, tiny fires in the dark. 850 million people live on these little dots, an oceanic world of culture and commerce torn apart by history. The ocean breaks apart into a tangle of cosines and azimuths, all pointing into pale nothingness. Windy is the north azimuth. Grad is the northeast azimuth. Samara is the East Azimuth. Seo is the West Azimuth. Isolas, they're called. Connections to other worlds. Words past the Insulindian, unknown to you. You only know you've never been there. You have little idea what they are. Distant stars, gods. But looking at them makes you feel almost non-existent. Whatever they are, 
the Isolas are immeasurably large compared to you and very, very far away. Perhaps they are gods, gods of distance and outer dust. It's not really a map, it's a tourist thing. A picture postcard with buildings on it, drawn from an isometric perspective. A date in the upper right corner says 48. Still, it's detailed. Could be pretty useful for scouting ahead. You see the jagged boxes of an industrial harbor, even the whirling in rags there. The north coast of a verdant island is shattered by the delta of a river. It is the River Esperance. Countless bridges put the shards back together, connecting city blocks to river islands. La Delta says a great artificial heart in the center, teeming with life forms and construction. To the east, rolling hillsides, Le Jardin, Stella Marie, the suburbs of Saint Baptiste, swallowed up into the mega city. They sound rich to you. This is Rivershall East. Kudon, it's somewhere to live, not bad. Then there's Jamrock, it's bad. People shouldn't live there, but they do. Then Forberg, it's almost as bad and much larger. Then Coal City, it's the worst. It's so small you can't even see it on the map. No, wait, there it is, north of Jamrock. The strip of coast next to the Greater Rivershall Industrial Harbour. It looks downright despondent. It's almost Coal City, to be honest. No, this is somewhere to be. This is all you have, but it's still something. Streets and sodium lights, the sky, the world, you're still alive. I'm sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. The other two are not for sale anymore. And besides, you could scarcely afford them. They're quite valuable, though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents, though. That old thing? It's an out-of-date map of a tourist location that never was nor came to be. From when some design studio people tried to spruce the place up four or five years ago, they also renovated the horse statue, set up those coin-operated viewers and designed the new street lamps. The place does not look like a successful tourist trap, does it? They didn't get that far, for some reason. A shame the project never got going. It would be nice if someone fixed Martinez up. All these ruins are bad for business. You peek at the storekeep, waiting for her to be distracted. When she's not looking, you deftly rip the map off the bulletin board and pocket it. You're now the proud owner of a map of Martinez, which, to be honest, did not even cost that much. A set of tattered curtains block. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little cage like trinkets, your shadow looming over it like an omen.
A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of little oddly shaped trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. Only an echo. No one is there. After exerting some force, you manage to turn the key. It's eerily silent. The door slides slightly open, letting a draft of cold air into the room. on the floor. The color has worn off its weight plates. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. There are no collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. Why does it feel so familiar? No, it's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber. The squeaky sound of sneakers. Your bruised knee against the mat. And a whistle. Then the feeling is gone. It's just a memory. A memory from another life. When you were young and fit. You're right. The weight may fall off. Better not touch it then. It would be a violation of EPIS safety regulations if the gym was still operating, but it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker, the mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. A diagram for summoning some time-forgotten being? The symbols seem very esoteric. The whole thing resembles Cadran mosaic tiles. Very percentic. History classes Students with their textbooks open, studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarelle blue tiles looked beautiful in the sun. Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6, UKV 123.7, UKV 123.9. Some written notes, too. Sparse and cryptic. Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. You think so? The web is comprised of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, titled The Game Master Frequency. A note says, this one can listen in on any station it wants. Someone very important. The leader of a massive on-air game built by these people. A conductor for the hundreds of story threads that pass through the Game Master's frequency. Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like. All of this is gone, left unrealized. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. My god. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. The schedule. I know doom when I see it. 
the company was running out of funding. Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins casting wax-based magic. Translucent welkins with organs shining under their skin and even ether welkins hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. Who are all those creatures? Fantasies of a tortured feverish mind? One of the Welkins, towering among the rest, appears to be different, however. It's Vara Hamira, a high Welkin, his face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a Welkin supremacist. The note says, all non-Welkin races will be purged. The Haldor, the Tworg, the humans, and even headless men, all of them purged. Imagine a world filled only with Welkin, Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. Some people really like building a world, I think. Even if it's just for a game. Mm -hmm. Political commentary. That one has a great beard, too. Just look at those details. So much effort. And for what? All gone. The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees grown in under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. You see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers, boreal dvorg, yurts under the snow, great mammoth-like beasts of burden. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way, like eggnog or morphine, a much-needed respite from our own world. A pinned postcard reads, The heat death scenario, a desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like Sprint, Daily Minimi, and GPI span the marker-drawn grid, the grand scheme of production and money. Minimi stands for a mini-meeting. It's part of a bigger framework for managing work called RUN. Station 41 tried to implement it a few years ago, but failed. As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Looks like they didn't make it. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, See the prod schedule filament for details. The handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans, Call in, tune out, Wirral untethered, and Heat death of the universe. Come <laughs> on. 
appears to be some kind of machine with a cube-shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. A radio computer. Just sitting here without anyone inside. We have one of these down at the station, but I never really learned how to use it. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing fluorescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. It's empty like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling, disconnected. This is where the memory should go. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. No, that's not it. I think... It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role-playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it. Make it work on radio computers. Utter madness, he thinks. As a compliment. No idea. They stopped filling out the schedule on the chalkboard. Through call-in stations, none of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game, as long as they have a two-way radio. Then there's the Game Master frequency that listens in on the smaller call-in stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. His fascination has swept aside other concerns for the moment. He's a little hooked. Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Gard, Messina, Konigstein. You know, places with industry. Not in Revachol West, among the ruins. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an inter game before. We just don't have the technology. Indeed, those Welkins are a dead giveaway. Roleplaying people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the We World board game with heat death thrown in. Super cool. Someone should give them millions of real immediately. This game is too good to be left unfinished. Indeed, it's ambitious and untethered from reality, but... Yes, especially in here. Okay, let's keep moving. an ice beer with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost and the beer's eyes are glowing red. The lieutenant doesn't answer. His eyes are glued to the animal. A sharp slice of light shines out from its mysterious belly door. A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the beer regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name Revachol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. I know. What an unfortunate marketing choice. What is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. 
The fridge buzzes with energy. The electricity bill on this thing must be catastrophic. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. A thick layer of cold dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Looks like this furnace has a face, and it's a face of agony. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice, or several voices, talking to each other. Near the smoke chamber, upstairs. What are you doing? Wait, really? We should investigate, see if someone's upstairs. A lush layer of coal now covers your skin, sinking into the wrinkles. Your hands look ancient. You feel the spirit of Ramut Karazai, ancient hero of Grad, pulsing through you. All that's left is to cover your face in war paint. Three dangerous stripes appear onto your cheeks, telling stories of your wild soul. What? What are you doing? Please wipe your face clean, officer. No, you're a proud warrior. Keep it. These three stripes give you strength in this dangerous realm. It would be foolish to remove them. And this protects you? Okay, sure. Go ahead. Just pointing out, this is not traditional Semenese war paint. No idea where you got it. Looks like it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire. Only dead rats. Something breaks loose in you. A mighty bellow echoes throughout the chimney's depths. The chatter of tiny voices above suddenly cease. Then... Hello? You've awakened the entity. Hello? Did you say anything? I can't hear you. Please come upstairs. There is a safety curtain on the second floor. I'll open it. You hear a low rumble upstairs. The sound of a curtain being pulled aside. After you, officer. to the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice bear fridge and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. An electric sizzle. The room is slightly quieter now. Something close to you dies with a soft electric purr. 
Why did you do that? The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. Looks like someone tried to reconceptualize their business here. Look, the skis and rotor blades both bear the same Slipstream logo. It seems likely that they started out making one, failed to turn a profit, and then pivoted to producing the other. That's a good question. Not quite. You do know that there's something unusual about this company's business model. Hello, I'm Nia. Did you try knocking on my window? I must have missed you. I've been listening to my Milius. So what kind of die are you looking for? Could this be the malicious entity? Perhaps it's wise to go along with this masquerade for now. She's got a direct view to the backyard. You should interrogate her about the lynching. Yes, Amelia is like a call-in station. You need a two-way radio to access one. That's why I have these. Mostly, they just teach you to swear in different languages. But some of the stations can be quite interesting. I was so absorbed, I must have missed you knocking. Then how did you get inside? By the south entrance? You know what? It doesn't even matter. What matters is that you're finally here. Let's talk dice. Did you have something specific in mind? I'm a novelty dice maker. 
tell me the name of your role-playing system and I'll make the die you need. That's why you're here, yes? Role-playing games? You know the one made by Fortress Accident. Does that count? Answers? How strange. These days people only come to me for dice and role-playing games. I'm not sure how helpful I'll be, but go ahead and ask. It almost looks as if the stones and dice are a natural part of the room, growing out of the shells like stalagmites. Nothing really. I didn't know him. Who cares about the dead body? We might be dealing with a malignant entity here. The lieutenant looks at his notebook, then the woman under the large window. Your window looks directly onto the courtyard. You're saying you didn't see or hear anything unusual last Sunday evening? I'm sorry, detective, but as you know, I usually have my headphones on when I'm working. It shuts out most of the daily ruckus behind my window. Well, there's always something going on in the whirling's backyard. During daytime, there are usually those kids. And lately, I've been seeing a lot of drunk workers hanging about. Must be because of the strike. But I never saw anyone during that fateful Sunday night, I'm afraid. I might have, but in this case, all I would have seen is my own reflection staring back from the darkness. It's really hard to make anything out in the yard when it's dark outside. Besides, I rarely get up to look out the window when I'm in the zone. It's an odd profession, making dice for people, but I like it, and I prefer doing this to sitting at home. She nods. Anything else, officer? We're inside the chimney of an old central furnace. It's strange, I know. But when I arrived here, all the other rooms were taken, so I had to build myself a makeshift home. Besides, I don't really have to pay any rent here, so that's a plus. Plaisance was right. There's an entity living in the chimney. You should ask her about the curse. Create here. More or less, are you interested in anyone specific? Yes, I think it was called Androgynous Orlando or something similar. They weren't a big hit around here. Turns out that working class men don't like genderless haircuts. They're scared of that word. A bit of experimenting every now and then isn't bad. Me neither. I just want it off my face. It wasn't merely a gym, it was Artemiteps Boxing Club, a community project created to steer at-risk use away from drugs and crime. A kind man, from Zemsk. I heard he had some trouble with the law when he was younger, and that's why he wanted to start the gym, as his way of giving back. It didn't. If anything, it made the youth situation in Martinez even worse. At some point, someone started a rumor that the punching bag downstairs was full of amphetamines. You should have known it. Eventually, the coalition took away the funding and the club went bankrupt. This was a few years ago. It's gotten much more peaceful around the plaza ever since. Oh, this one's a mess. There used to be a company that promised to repair windows 24 hours a day. What could go wrong with this one, right? Turns out, the business was actually set up as a front for an illicit group that was producing snuff milius. Who would have guessed? Hmm, what's the snuff milia? 
and they never cleaned up the debris either. Now it's just littering the hallway and I have no idea how to get rid of it on my own. It's a sub-Rosa radio station that broadcasts real murders with real victims. Some people pay good money to get off on it. What does she mean to get off on it? Don't worry, the ICP has a separate division that deals exclusively with unlicensed sub -roses. This isn't our problem. Good luck with that. It's not easy catching those perpetrators. There used to be a fashion atelier here, but I have forgotten the head designer's name. They were doing well for a couple of years, until the insect rights activists came. Yeah, the atelier didn't know it either. They produced a certain collection that used chitin among the materials. Apparently chitin is made in the Occident, where it's extracted from beetle wings. And you know how all kinds of political movements are big in the Occident. The activists shut down the biggest chitin supplier, which of course caused the price to skyrocket. And, naturally, all the most fashionable tastemakers refused to be seen in chitin from then on. The atelier went bankrupt before they could finish the collection. Actually, insects do have brains, but yes, I understand what you're saying. I think the protesters took it a little too far. As she shifts around, you notice several dead flies on the windowsill in front of her. Legs up. They're not moving. Anything else? You mean Mr. Fabron, the taxidermist? No, he mostly just did drugs. But what drugs exactly? He got high on some weird taxidermy chemicals. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Eventually, they caused him to lose control of his bladder. The smell was awful. Even you can probably do better than that. You can almost see it. A small, sickly old man, hunched behind his work desk, his pants stained with old piss, stuffing a sad, stiff-legged raccoon dog. The entire scene looks tragic. Oh, right. I hope you didn't try to ring me. I think none of those doorbells work, including mine. I'm still in the middle of connecting the wires. Sorry about the confusion. The doorbell with the empty name card must belong to her then. That's right. I haven't even written my name there. As I said, it's quite useless right now. It doesn't work yet. You could say so. Both houses were built at the same time and under the East Delta Commerce Center project. That explains why you can call the whirling from the intercom, albeit I doubt that anyone responds. If the whirling is part of the same building, then it's part of the doomed commercial area. The darkness of this place is there, too. Right, it used to be a gaming arcade. This is an ancient failure, before my time. I'm not surprised, however. My advice? Don't base your business on a fad. Hypnotism, floreography, trick track, especially pinball. Agreed. Pinball is the worst. His disdain for pinball could not be clearer. It can't be true. They don't work here anymore. They've been gone for years. Are you sure it was Lipstream SEA? Was it a woman? Maybe it was Playsans from the bookstore. Tricentennial Electrics? It used to be a major electric company 100 years ago. Are you sure it wasn't just some kids playing a prank on you? No, it was something else. It was eerie. Pranks can be eerie. Ah, oh, the kids these days. We were just one of them and now they're terrorizing us. No solidarity. 
Sure, I'm listening. They were made by a company called Slipstream. After they pivoted from making rotor blades to skis, their chief executive took off on a vacation with all their money. Honestly, I think it's quite funny. I think he's still sending out holiday transmissions from Tulula or Tiumotiri or Hashkor or wherever he is. The usual, I imagine. But he's been thinking up all kinds of new business plans and can't wait to get started on them just as soon as he returns. Men like that are a curse. Sure, but Slipstream is history now. All their remaining assets got seized by the bailiffs in 47. I have no idea why those skis and blades are still lying around in the house. Not much use now, I guess. Fortress Accident, the radio game studio. She liked them. They were an interesting bunch. We talked about role-playing systems every now and then. Once, I even saw two of them get into fisticuffs over Wiro. They certainly took their work very seriously, even if they seemed to be chronically liberal with their schedules. The usual, they ran out of money and couldn't get the project done on time. Well, I did hear them talking at times. They seemed to believe they were historical individuals on some grand quest. Yes, but when the money started to run out, they just began to complain a lot about capitalism. You know, how the markets are rigged to keep out new businesses and so on. In the end, they just didn't get it done. They didn't have enough willpower to produce something truly historic and to show up to work on time. She's right. Showing up to work on time is important. Showing up to work on time is hard. No, scratch that. Showing up to work at all is difficult, especially if you've been drinking. Not the wisest decision. You would have lost all your savings. The dice is black and filled with little silvery flakes, like snowfall. Anything else? Oh boy, the fabled river show I see tea. You're in for a treat here. The place was owned by two guys who had some rather innovative ideas about marketing. The bear was one of them. Now ask me about their other ideas. Indeed, what were the other ideas? There was really just one, and it involved picking out the prettiest girls in the neighborhood and paying them 20 cents per hour to man the booth. And by man the booth, I mean slump behind the counter with a face that could maim you if you ever dared to disturb their bored magazine browsing. Oh, but they did. They did show up to work, and not alone. There were also acne-ridden girlfriends and gorilla-like boyfriends loitering near the ice cream stand. And they already had the bear. Of course not. The bear was terrifying. No one wants ice cream guarded by a hostile apex predator. To make matters worse, the fridge didn't work too well either, and half the ice cream came out malformed and partially melted. Eventually, Ravishow Ice City lost the price war to its rival, Glass A 5000. Glass A 5000 sold caramel sundaes for only 5 cents a piece, out of regular fridges. You did what?
Ah, of course they left it plugged in. Even in death, the bear is costing them money. The taxidermist who made it said it was his vision beast. He said he met his vision beast while high on desiccants. He called it Megatherian. Sounds cool. It's an imaginary beast that guides you through life. By telling you to do more drugs, mostly. A wise and noble beast, guiding you toward the land where the streets are paved with drugs. The horrific necktie tightens around your neck, strangely excited. But it doesn't feel particularly fun this time around. What? No, officer. I don't have a vision beast. Normal people don't have vision beasts. Only drug adult madmen like the taxidermist do. Right. Anyway, now you know the story of the fallen ice cream empire. Anything else? Another failed business, perhaps? I've been here for a long time. I'm pretty sure it still doesn't work. But sure, I'm listening. Good. I hope it clarified things a bit. What else? I've heard the stories. But I don't think those stories are true. Play Sounds, the bookshop lady? I've heard that her business is doing rather well. Have the energy spared her somehow? All right, but it's not just the bookstore that's still up and running. What about the whirling in racks? Some people say it's part of the building complex. And then there is me. I've been here for 14 years, selling novelty dice to role-playing enthusiasts. Not exactly a million real business idea, yet somehow I've survived despite the talk of malicious energies. Strange, isn't it? I was just about to ask, what do you think? Do you think the curse is real? Time has come to face the source. Fear not, for the forces of the universe are supporting you in this psychic quest. Exactly. Truth is always so disappointingly mundane and boring. But I'm glad we got this sorted out. Anything else I can help you with today? How did I become one? It was a business decision. I was a regular jeweler at first, but that's an unfocused field with too much competition. Some of my friends were role players. They asked me to make some polyhedral dice out of cobalt. That was my first order. I grew it from there. Not especially. I like working with rare materials and a steady pay. And role players as customers? They're nice people. Some of those nice people have big bucks to spend on novelty items. She's thankful for the security they provide her.
alive and well. Don't keep me waiting now. What's in there? In that dark sarcophagus. Yes, yes. How was it? I knew it. Oh, such horrors that have been thrust upon us. But what else did you find? Did anything survive? No, of course not. Have you located the... In a novelty dice maker? Well, spit it out. Why does she need the dice? For some kind of sorcery? Sometimes they use the ankle bones of sheep. understand if you're not sure it's her then where is the source of the doom how did she explain the curse you just don't say you don't have any answer yet the uncertainty is killing her to hell with it perchance you ought to just lie you've come this far you know how to end it there is an entity behind the entity A third order presence, yes. A great dark relief washes over her. I've heard of these triactors. In certain occult literature, that's too dark to dwell on for too long, and definitely not in public. I understand everything, sir. Thank you for your descending into the maelstrom. I will keep fort up here, strengthen the wards, do my best. And if you happen upon the third entity in your travels, may the Lord be with you. Well, this has been absolutely educational. If we happen on the third presence in our travels, we will certainly come back to tell you. Yes, the venture continues in other waters, darker waters. Should we get out of here before... Hello again, officer. How are things? Me? I am just a gardener. I am working. I have a greenhouse in the yard there. I There's discomfort. She stops mid-sentence. Well, as you already know, there's a corpse there, hanging from a tree. It smells pretty bad, so I have to take breaks. Don't worry, miss. We are here to clean it up. You can get to work soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thanks for keeping me in the know. I am a gander and a hunter and a gatherer. Feel like a traveler. A simple little cadence. He seems to be making it up as he goes. From another planet. Hey there. It's the jam, my man. It's a traffic jam for the ages. Harbor gates up the street are shut tight. No explanation given. Workers on strike. Scabs agitating all around clusterfuck. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long-haul limbo for days upon days upon days. Upon yeah, yeah, exactly. It's official. 
he too agrees. This is the antechamber of the afterlife. Feels like forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes of mazout. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. Behind the laugh, however, a touch of sorrow. So tell me, what do you need? He ain't one of us drivers, I know that. All accounted for. Otherwise, I haven't really asked about that. Been wasting time right here. Keep him busy. It's easy to see he's telling the truth. He's kept his nose out of the dark stuff. Analyzing the fundamental structural and psychological conditions of being stranded in the midst of a sea of motor lorries and their sad, despondent chauffeurs. A sense of surprise there ain't more bodies hanging from more trees. Don't be a stranger. Don't you welcome to Revachol me. My grandfather came here from a 3000 year old racist isolationist culture, while your ancestors came to this island a mere 300 years ago. Every school of thought and government has failed in the city, but I love it nonetheless. It belongs to me as much as it belongs to you. It's men like you who keep Revachol divided, making it that much harder for everyone to climb out of this post-war limbo. What he means is, fixation on the Revacholian nation makes it harder for Revachol to actually attain self-determination. Oh, come on, man. I just said, uh, welcome to Revachol. Uh... It's a lorry driver thing. I know exactly what you meant. You think my kind doesn't belong here, that I should watch myself and behave. But you see, I'm an officer of the RCM. It's actually my job to make sure you behave. I would advise you to remember that. Silence. The air between them becomes tense. Your partner needs backup. Now's your moment to shine. I haven't learned anything I didn't know before. The lieutenant exhales and resumes his regular calmness. Whatever you say, officers. Oh, not much anymore. I'm here to pick up some cargo, but uh, the dock workers are on strike, so uh, it's a sit and wait on your ass situation. The strike? <laughs> I'd have been at it for a while. A month, two months maybe. But this here is just the last week or so. Apples. Apples is exactly the kind of thing you'd say if you had something to hide. Yeah, apples. I take it you had other questions? Uh, it's about biological determinism, natural law, the sorting of the races. Not the most popular topic nowadays, with a coalition in charge and all. You might want to change the topic. That is, bury your head under the sand like common sheep. 
I'm not just racist. Look, I've read books. Huh? The science of racial theory has all been proved, even if some people don't want to accept it. People who've studied these things say that you and me are superior by design. So, uh, naturally, we Occidentals should be in charge. Obviously, you can see the merits in that. Open your eyes. Haven't you noticed something different lately? An unfortunate downturn, maybe? Huh? When members of the superior race cease to believe in their innate superiority, they stop competing for resources. This concerns you, policemen, so you better be vigilant. The damn kits are showing up good lately. Same with the mosquitoes. And the other intruder species, too. They're on the precipice of cultural victory. Cultural victory? What is this, then? It's what the Kips of Boogie Street are going for, right under our noses. And the others, too, on the radio. Heard any chanson lately? Heard any motetos or leader? No. Dominating culture is how they plan to win. They say so themselves. It's true. Also, you need to realize the dangers of mixing races. Who knows what might happen if people don't stay in their birthplace? place? You might end up with a new sub-race, with unknown characteristics leading to extra competition. That's why you've got to control the offspring. Don't push your luck, runt. Looking for something, runt? Come to tell me. Oh, not much anymore. I'm here. Apples. Apples is exactly the... Look, as detective. I come from a long line of lorry men. We got an... Oh, I'm here to pick up a load of fucking apples, man. Just regular, Koiko picked apples. Damn, you're not gonna get more out of them on this. Oh, yeah, they're a big deal. My great-grandfather was a carter. Had a royal license and everything. Which sure fucking is. We have a guild and everything, huh? Very ancient. Very prestigious. Hell no. It's a guild. Invitation only. Unions work for the rich fucks. They're basically the same. Been trying to fuck us out of our heritage in the name of profits, but you can't replace experience. Huh. Trusting street thugs with their goods is going to fuck him right up the ass. Mark my words, generations of practice and no laughing matter. Welcome to Frit. Feel free to look around or something. Everything is out on the shelves. What's that magazine she's reading? 